Class, class, quiet down out there. We're getting ready to begin class. Shh. Too loud. Too loud? I hear them. <laughs> Leslie, quiet them down. No. They're, yes, they're very, very loud. Is the class getting a little rambunctious? Um, no, I think they're good. But I do like your teacher voice. Yes. We, we do know you are a teacher. So. I do have a teacher voice. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Hope you had a magnificent weekend, our Zoo Adventures friends. Um, it is Zoo Adventures today, and we're actually live with you. Uh, today, in front of the camera is a bunch of stuff, and Steve. Awesome behind the camera is Leslie today. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? We do hope you had a great weekend. It was pretty this weekend. A little chilly, but pretty, at least here in Asheboro, North Carolina. What was it like where you're from there, Leslie? Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not that far away. Oh, that's right. It was nice in Greensboro. Yeah. I forgot about that. You're just kind of. It looked beautiful, but it was like kind of cold. And it was windy. Yeah. Really windy. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. So today, all about animal classification. How animals are grouped together and classified. And I have some notes here I'll be referring to because I can't remember all the numbers sometimes. Numbers are weird. So I wanted to make sure I gave you some good numbers from what I found from a couple of reliable websites like Nat Geo um, and Britannica. So that's where that information is going to come from. Um, we have some live animal visitors that will be with us as well. Always awesome to have some of our animal ambassadors here with us during our Zoo Adventures programs with you. The donation button is up if you want to hit that. You know, we'd love for you to put some donations in there if you can and if you are in a situation where you're able to do that. Leslie, you raise your hand. Yes. That is fantastic. Hi, Bradley. If you guys, let's come up. Make sure you guys heard. Make sure you hear Leslie say that. That's pretty awesome. Hi, Bradley. <laughs> One of the perks of being here with us with this program, we can say hi to people from away. And hello to you all, all of you that are out there. It is so neat that so many of you are here week after week after week. It is awesome. And it's fun that you guys are able to comment back, comment to us, and we're able to shout back to you with some of those really fun interactions. So, as we get started, animal classification. Animals are grouped, life is grouped in a lot of ways. It goes kingdom, which there are five or six or eight or seven, depending on how you're counting them. Um, there have been some that have been added, and some folks that are splitters are kind of making more of those kingdoms. Some people who are lumpers or clumpers are putting them together. So we usually say five. Is that how you usually teach it, Leslie? Yeah, five or six? Usually, yeah. yeah. So five is kind of the big number. And then from kingdom, you begin to split those out into phylums or phyla, individual phyla. So there's a lot of those as well. I don't think I have a certain number. It depends on kind of how many you're looking at. Um, anywhere between 35 and fewer than that. Again, depends on the scientist, depends how you put them together. So kingdom, kingdom, phylum, and then it starts to get kind of weird. And the way I remember it, it's class, order, family. This is classification today. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family. I remember it that it's cough in the middle. Class, C, order, O, phyla, family, F. There's a cough in the middle. So that helps me is remember. It, is it like kingdom, phylum, <coughs> genus, species? Genus, species. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's how it works. So you have kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and you're just getting more and more and more specific. You get to genus and then species. Can I tell you how I remember it? I would love it. All right. I remember it as... King Philip came over from Geneva, Switzerland. So, ki kingdom, king. King. Phylum, Philip. Philip. Came, class. Okay. Over, order. Um, from, um. family, Geneva, ge uh, genus, uh, Switzerland, species. What do they call it? They call it a mnemonic or something like that? Mnemonic. Mnemonic, device, yeah. yeah. 
So a lot of different Shout ways to think about Shout out to um, East Mech High School where whoop, whoop. I learned that. <laughs> So yeah, so that's what we're talking about today. And we're going to get to some specifics in a second, but I wanted to kind of share them with you and listen to some of the numbers. Phylum 35 or 9, depends on how you're looking at them. Um, some of the ones in animal world, arthropods, we'll talk about those guys. Chordates, talk about them. And then it gets a little smaller. Nadaria, per, per, um, periphera, mol mollusks. So it gets a little smaller and smaller. So you're getting more and more specific. Kingdom phylum, class, over 100 types of classifications of animals. But under chordata, chordata, which you and I are, we have a backbone. Chordates all have a backbone, which is what we're focusing on today. Um, there's seven, five to seven different groups in the chordate family, or chordate class. Get down to order, there's 19 orders of mammals. 19. Uh, 153 families. 1,229 genus. Over 5,500 different types of mammals. And that's just mammals. That's just mammals. 5,500 different types of mammals. Most common type of mammal? I know. Any, any answers? Most common type of mammal. Think of the diversity of mammals out there that you guys are familiar with. The most common type of mammal, there's a most common and there's a pretty close two. And then it kind of begins to really shrink off after that. And I think the, the second one is a lot of reasons why people think the second one is related to the first one, but they aren't related. I, I agree with that. Any, any thoughts, friends? Most common type of mammal is... Rodents. Rats, mice, squirrels, things like that. Rodents, number one. Number two. Flying rodents. <gasps> Flying rodents. They're not really rodents. But they're not, right? Wendy would be very upset that I said that. Wendy would be very upset. <laughs> so rodents, number one. Flying mammals, number two. Examples of flying mammals are? I know you guys know flying mammals. We talk about them all the time. What are flying mammals? Karen got rodents, though. Karen got rice. Nice job. Good job. Rodents, number one. Flying mammals number two, also wait. known as? Wait, 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 let's see, let's wait, let's wait. We have to wait for the, um, the what's that word, you know? The typers. The, yes. And then Bill. the connection. Bill coming in with bats. Nice, yeah, bats. So rogues number one, bats number two, and then it's, it falls off pretty quick after those two. Erica also said bats. Nice, good job, good job, Bill, good job, Erica. Um, so that's kind of neat. So 5,500 species of, of mammal. Um, just so we can share them with you real quick before we get into this. Um, let's go up from numbers. Amphibians, 8,100. Reptiles, 8,700. Wow. Birds, over 10,000. Wow. Fish, 34,000 different species. So birds have to be the most, or fish have to be the, the most species in the world, right? You would think that fish are the most species in the world, but you wouldn't even be close. Oh. With more than 34,000. Animals that don't have one of these. Ooh. Invertebrates. Invertebrates. Lack of backbone. It's like... 95 to 97 to 98 <gasps> percent of all animals on the planet invertebrates. Wow. 95 to 97 percent. How many total species are out there? We don't know. But best estimates, 5, 15, 30 million? What? Right? What? 30 million. Million? 30 million different types of animals out there. 97% don't have a backbone. Are wow. invertebrates. Bugs, insects, uh, spiders, worms, clams. Coral. Coral. Jellies. Let's see what else. Um, you said the... Uh, Cotton derm, uh, the sponges. Sponges. 
So all of those Squid. begin to make up that other side. <laughs> 97% of all animal life out there lacks a backbone. Pretty amazing. Number of identified species, about 1.5 to 1.7 million. That's identified. It's animals that have a name and everything. Genus and species name. Not a Leslie or a Steve name. Bill said, who has done all the counting? I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve, uh, Steve is actually the, uh, <laughs> the chief counter. On the chief counter. <laughs> I was busy this weekend. <laughs> it really depends, Bill. It's, there's a lot of people out there that are doing different types of research. And that's why the numbers are kind of flexible. We're not really sure where we are with some of the numbers. Um, because there's animals being identified all the time. And the flip of that coin, animals are going extinct all the time. So, big challenges. Yeah. All right, let's get into, this. Let's get into some of our classifications yeah. here. Wanted to kind of get those numbers out of the way. Some people are number people, and I wanted to share with you. We have some cool stuff. We have some really cool stuff. Let's start with the table. Okay. What's on the table? We have three different orders of animals on the table. We have reptiles. We have birds. We have mammals. We're going to share with you a reptile, an amphibian, and an invert in a second. So classification, where do you want to start, Leslie? Um, uh, where, where does class begin? For me, usually class begins with reptiles. Reptiles, so we're going to come over here. So reptiles, ectothermic for the most part. Okay, that's a nice fancy word. Ectothermic is a wonderful science word. It means cold-blooded. And what that means specifically, ecto, outside or external thermic temperature. Their temperature is regulated by the area around them, the water or the air around them, the soil around them. Reptiles, alligators, crocodiles, lizards, skinks, snakes, turtles, tortoises. We have some examples here. They also all have scales. This is alligator hide. An alligator hide is covered with scales. They're large scales, but they're covered with scales. So that's one of the primary characteristics of reptiles. Alligators have scales, turtles have scales, tortoises have scales. Alligator skull, they do have teeth. Not all reptiles have teeth, but alligators do. Arr. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> Here's an example. I'm going to put the Muppet down just for a second so I can grab it with two hands. I'm sure you guys can still hear me. This is a reptile, but no teeth. That is a <laughs> large skull. Yep. Snapping turtle. I can see why. I like that sound. That is a good sound. Snapping turtle. No teeth. Beak. So you can't really use the skull. You can rely on the fact that they lay eggs. What egg is that from? This is from the jar. Thanks, Steve. You're welcome. What, what species of animal? Any laid, guesses out there? Laid the egg that is inside of said jar. <laughs> Whoever lays this lays about 25 or 30 at a time. It's a pretty big egg too, so yep. I would assume that it's not like a really small nope. little tiny lizard or and tiny it's, turtle. Or... It's one of the few animals that the mom will guard the eggs in reptile world. Oh, yeah, that doesn't happen so all the, the time. So the female guards the eggs in reptile world for this animal. Any guesses? None yet. Give them a little bit of time because we have that lag. Woo wee! <laughs> it's warm in the RTI building today. It is. That's where we are. We're behind the kid zone today. We'll give everybody a hint. So we, we saw we, Erica it. said sea turtle. That's a good guess. That's a good this guess. Is, Their is, eggs are round. And they don't necessarily, I would say they don't really guard their... They do a job of hiding them. They do a but they great job of hiding them, yeah. They don't guard them. The female doesn't hang around and guard them. Where the female of this 
literally hangs out. There we go. We have Bill and Erica saying alligator. Woo -woo. Great job. Yeah. Yeah, alligators. They build a nest, lay the eggs in a nest. Usually rotting material incubates because the alligator can't incubate it because it's not warm. So the rotting of the nest material leaves bark, twigs, sticks, poop. All that begins to rot and warms the eggs. And that's what incubates them. But mom hangs around to protect them. Right. Here's another thing that's hard, that a lot of that turtles have. Remember we said that they have scales. The turtle's scales on the outside of the shell, we've talked about this a couple times before. These scales, this is from a different type of turtle. But yeah. they're, they're I was going to say, they look very different. Yeah, they're very different. These are kind of like bumpy. Yep. This Those is red-footed like, tortoise. These are a little bit This more is black. snapping turtle. Okay. They but these are called places. scoots. Yeah, very much. Those are called scoots. You've heard us use that term before, scoots. Snap or the scales of a turtle's or a tortoise's shell. They're on the outside, but, they, but they're still scales. Let's get out one of our live reptile friends. Okay, we're gonna look at some more scoots while you do that. Look at the scoots, this is pretty cool. You've got the mic, I do not. So these can, scoots, now what I think is these scoots um, are kind of like our fingernails in a lot of way. They're made out of the same material and they protect the body or they protect the shell and they um, shed. So they are constantly kind of getting new scales or excuse me, new scales and new scoots. Mm -hmm. And then that's what's able to protect the more delicate parts underneath. So, so like the alligator, all these scales would also shed. So here ooh, ooh. is an Eastern rat snake and a type of reptile. And you said we had, we got scoots today? Yes, so this is also named scoots, right? right. <laughs> um, Karen did ask though, why are they called scoots? And that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Do you know? I do. And the answer oh. is that scientists aren't the nicest people on the planet sometimes. Oh no. I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. No, I do not know why. Um, <laughs> and I spell it funny too. S-C-U-T-E-S. Right. But why? It's a great question. A little research should be done into that. Yeah, and we'll assign that to Leslie. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> but here's an example of a reptile. Ectothermic, cold-blooded, relies on the temperature of the surroundings for their body temperature. Let's see your face, Scoots. Oh, you're Scales so on the top and the belly. The scales are for protection. Color, camouflage. And the scales on the belly and the scales on the back are very, very different from purpose. Can you get the belly scales at all? Listen, she's coming straight towards oh, us. Oh, is so she? I'm see. sorry. I can't see. Hi. Her. Yes, you see? Uh, yes. Okay. Can I get your... I'm, I'm, gonna I'm nope. going to... Okay. I'm going to... She's got my hand. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see it. No, we're good. So how's that? Perfect. She's going down my jacket because it's warm. Yeah. Well, we think it's kind of fun to share. Remember talking about animal classification today. Thanks to our friends that are, might be answering questions. We appreciate you guys being there today. I saw Bob. Oh, thanks, Bob. And then I think some other people, but sorry. Emily might be. Emily's probably working today on yeah. something different. Kathy might be there maybe today. Kathy, Linda, Corinne, Drew. Thank you guys all for maybe being there. Yeah. Nikki. So yeah, it's just kind of fun to be able to share this reptile with you. Covered in scales and an ectotherm relies on the outside body. They do lay eggs. Many, most of all reptiles do. We'll go from this reptile to the birds. To the birds. To the birds, to the birds. Ooh, the birds, look at I'm going to show all these really neat eggs. They're so diverse. We've got Scarlet ibis, so that's um, kind of those really large red birds that we have in our aviary. Cool mottled. Erica, that is an eastern rat snake. Eastern rat. Yeah. We have black swan. Look how big that is. White-faced whistling duck. 
You can add the how big yeah, some true. of these are. Yeah, true. There you go. And the other, ooh, this crane one is beautiful. Canada That's, Goose. Did you talk about the Canada Goose? People yeah. are familiar with that one. Yeah. Bolly Minas is pretty neat, too. What? Or the Spoonbill. I think that's Spoonbill. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. What makes a bird a bird? Great question. What are the, what's the defining characteristic of a bird? Is it eggs? Do other animals lay eggs? Yep. Reptiles lay eggs, amphibians lay eggs, insects lay eggs, mammals lay eggs, so nope, eggs isn't it. Uh, I bet it must be flight. I bet it's flight. No, I, I don't think it's flight. Flight, mammals fly, insects fly. I'm trying to give a hint. So it can't be flight. Uh, must be the beak, must be the beak. Oh no, we just saw that, that turtles have beaks too. <gasps> All right, um, Carrie says feathers. Who? Carrie. Carrie who? Erica says feathers. Carrie Page. Nice job, Carrie Page. Nice job, Erica. Great what job. What they say again? I'm sorry, I missed you. What did they say? Were they right? Feathers. Yes, they were. Feathers? Yeah. Not flight? No. Bats not wings? Fly. No. No? Not beaks? No. So they're the only animals on the planet with feathers? Yes. I agree! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feathers! Only birds have feathers, and they play so many roles in the life of a bird. Color, and they kind of streamline them a little bit, and they obviously help with flight. This is, I wasn't allowed to pick the wing today because Leslie said, I'm picking the wing. <laughs> this is a great horned owl. Yes. And again, you can get an idea of size. Put your hand down there for this one. Oh. They know how big my hand is. <laughs> I am very. Yeah, I guess you hands. can't because you're taking the picture. That's kinda, I know. I'm like, I'm trying. Rude. To I gotta put my hand down there too. <laughs> so it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Wingspan of a great horned owl might be six feet. Total wingspan is, of course, tip to tip, not just one wing. Is that about what your wingspan is? I'm, I'm a, that's right. Yep, I'm about six feet. Yeah. Good call. I don't fly very well though. No. Remember, birds fly with their whole arms. Bats fly with their fingers. <laughs> so birds kind of do that funky swimming through the air, and then bats flip and flap their fingers. So, a couple other characters of birds, they're more endothermic, ectothermic external temperature, endo, I control it inside. I'm able to moderate my own body temperature, my body, I can't, do it, I can't think about it and do it, but my body kind of has its own internal temperature. Mammals and birds have that. There's actually a species of fish the opa that does that. And the leatherback turtle, the leatherback sea turtle, also somewhat warm-blooded. Keeps its body temperature warmer than the other. And then some sharks. So it's not just a mammal or a bird thing anymore. Again, exceptions, exceptions, exceptions. Can't do the one thing. I wish I could. Can't. But we come down to birds again. That primary characteristic of birds, feathers. They do lay eggs. They can fly. They do have a beak. All those are correct, but it's not that defining characteristic. It's not what makes a bird a bird. It's the feathers, like we were told by our friends. Nice job. Come down here one more. I was going to say, speaking of things that fly. There you go. There's a vampire bat. Yes, it's real. No, it's not alive. It's real, but not alive. It's one that passed away here at the zoo, but continues that education process through taxidermy here. Leslie's showing you a, a jaguar. Mm -hmm. Jaguar hides have these, these rosettes around rosettes, not quite as big as a leopard. And cheetahs would just have black spots, yeah. in case you're curious. Yeah, I like that. Nice job. Thanks, Leslie. What's this pokey thing? It is very pokey. I'll pick that up and make it a little bit. We thought it was kind of cool. Defining characteristics. We're talking about classification of animals. Oops, sorry, I'll come down. Defining characteristic of these mammals versus birds. All, bird, all, all mammals give birth to live animals? Do all mammals give birth to live? Nope. So that's not a defining characteristic. Um, does anybody have an idea what the defining characteristic of a mammal is? 
This is hair. This is hair. What? But that looks like pokey. It does, and it's very pokey. I'm going from the head back towards what would be the tail. So it's not as pokey, but if I went the other way, yeah, that would hurt. Yeah. This is a hedgehog, by the way. That's a modified hair. So hair is a defining characteristic of mammals. Having hair. Gray hair. <laughs> defining characteristic of mammals having gray hair. Yep. So I got, no, I do have some gray hair. So. You did, I started getting gray when I was like 18 or 19. Oh, well. And maybe you're like Dr. Mentor who, he talked a lot last time, didn't he? Did you guys enjoy the tour? I couldn't get him to stop talking. He just talked and talked and talked. But I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Um, so, but he, he doesn't have any hair, but that's my choice. Hair is one of the defining characteristics of mammals. Any other defining characteristics of mammals? It's not that they give birth to lives because there's a couple animals that don't. You guys know the animals that don't? That lay, you guys know the animals that do lay eggs and don't give birth to live? Better mammals. Better mammals, thank you. You guys know? While you think about it, I'm going to get another animal. Let's see. Any thoughts? I'm going to show this beautiful leopard pelt while we're doing that. Excuse me, jackal. They look so similar. They do. I'm putting on some fancy gloves for our next animal. I can hear you. Yes, I don't know if they hear that. They're tight. Platypus. Good job, Bill. Ooh, yeah, that, that is that is one. There's That's one, one of the two. The other one is kind of pokey like the hedgehog. There we go. Erica, great job. Echidna. Oh, What's up with that? The echidna. Erica, Erica, we're the ones teaching the class. <laughs> We're the ones teaching the class. Maybe they can, they can come <laughs> teach with us next time. That's great job. <laughs> what do you all think he, uh, Steve is getting? He's got to put gloves on. Yeah. And he's putting water on his gloves. I'm going to try to see if I can find one over here, but I don't think we have one. So it's none of these types of animals. It's not a meerkat or a crocodile or a turtle or a fish. But it's related to this animal. I got him, I got him. Yeah? I do. I have forest with me. How cute is this little guy? Oh, so cute. So not a reptile, although it kind of looks like one. Yeah, it looks very lizard-like. Looks very lizard-like. Four legs. Is all the weird brown stuff part of his body? No, that's okay. what he lives in. Okay. That's like a moss? Yeah, okay, gotcha. This is an amphibian. This is Forest, the spotted salamander. And amphibians, about 8,100 different types of amphibians out there. Let's see if I can get him to kind of poke up. He's cold. <laughs> or, yep, I'm hoping he'll warm up a little bit. There he goes in my hands. Amphibian, two life. Animal with two lives. By definition, remember we're talking about classification and how to classify animals? Amphibians live both in the water and land. That's how they're defined. They live both in the water and land. Oftentimes the, on land, the in water part is where the eggs are laid and the juveniles are growing up. A lot of times the adults spend more time on land. All skin on the outside and they respire. <laughs> respire? Respire. Breathe. Okay. Through that skin and they can take up water through their skin too. I have a fun science word for that. You ready? What's that? Their skin is semi permanent. They're permeable. Semi permeable? Yeah. So, so things can sort of pass through? Yeah. Them? More than like our skin. Permeate to go through. Oh, I see. Drop some off. We're going to have to clean that up, Steve. Yeah. This is very true. <laughs> and one thing of spotted salamander, guys, no, no hair, no fur, no scales, and they're breeding at this time of year. Salamanders are breeding in the winter. In fact, we have a lot of eggs of spotted salamanders in Kid Zone's Pond. 
We sure do. So a spotted salamander, and again, this is forest. We don't know how old forest is. We know he's an adult. So this is full grown? This is pretty much full grown. He might get a little longer. Yeah. Thank you, forest. Great job today. <laughs> Put so related to that frog that I showed. Put you back under there. Hmm. Forest has disappeared. Has anybody learned something cool today? I did. I'm not I'm asking you. Oh, sorry. I have one more animal I want to share with them. All right. Well, while you're getting the animal, we'll see if anybody learned anything neat today. Share with something. Classification. We've talked mainly today about chordates, animals in the chordata, the animals with backbones. Animal without a backbone. Which is only 3%. Of yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> Which is only, yeah, only 3% of all the animals in the world. So when you look at... If you look at our lovely mural, which thank you, Bill, for saying that it was beautiful. We do love this mural. Everything on this mural is a chordate, but that's only 3% of the Only world. 3%. This is an example of the animal that is of the other 97%. That's big. And of the 97%, this is one of the most common types of animals in that 97%. This is a type of beetle. What it do you looks, guys think? Cute? It looks different than the beetles that I usually like. Yep. This is usually the type of beetle that kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. A lot of people kind of get the heebie-jeebies, but I wanted to see if you guys, what do you guys thought about this beetle? Oops, sorry. If that They're large. Bad. One of the largest types of this beetle on the planet. Oops. Trying to rotate the phone. It said no. <laughs> Neat colors. I like that the head is underneath. You able to show? You able to show that at yeah. all? Yeah. The head is underneath. Look at those antenna. Digital friends. This is a type of cockroach. <gasps> this is a type of cockroach. It's giant cute. cave or the giant Caribbean cave cockroach. I mean, I think it's kind of cute. It's right. Like, it's a little little antenna moving around. It's got this little head. That's why I didn't want to say it was a cockroach at first. Yeah. Because when you say cockroach, like, yeah, there he goes, yeah. Yeah. But like all cockroaches, he's got a very important job to do. Their favorite food in the wild, do you know, Wesley? Um, Wendy does. Wendy knows their favorite food. I believe it's poop. <gasps> what kind of poop if they're the giant cave cockroach? All right, something that lives in a cave. Hmm. Maybe, oh, you said Wendy, so Wendy, I'm going to go with, hint. I'm going to go with that. Right. They feast on guano in the caves of the Caribbean. Well, thank you for doing that so that other things don't have to. Exactly. But look at those just really neat colors. And this is an example of an invertebrate, an animal without a backbone. It's pretty, uh. That makes up again 97% of all the animal life out there. And this seems to be pretty kind of, I would say, I mean, to be anthropomorphic, pretty easy going. Yeah, pretty calm. Yeah, not, not yeah. like stuff that's, usually when I think of cockroaches, I think of like scurrying, scurrying around. around. Yeah. This yeah, one's pretty, laid pretty back. just kind of like, hey, we're... Really big, can fly, but just a little bit. And just, yeah, like you said, Leslie, he's kind of chilling. Hold on to my jacket very well. Yeah. But we wanted to share another type of classification of animals with you, with, which was the invertebrates. Since we're very much, we're much more familiar with the vertebrates that are out there. Can't see you. There you go. So, let me grab the Muppets. So can it's kind of echoey in here. Let me grab the Muppets. We can wrap this up with you. Whew. I love the live ones. I know we kind of got feedback from you guys. that You guys are pretty happy with both. The live are fun for us. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's live episode. Thanks again to those people answering questions behind the scenes. Um, I bet they were posting information about our camps and our snoring safaris. How about that? If, you, if they didn't, go to nczoo.org and find out more about those through education. We have camps and snoring safaris. 
sleeping over at the zoo. Outside only. There's rules there. So check that out at nczoo.org if you get a chance. And if you made a donation, they thank you so very much. We appreciate you guys being able to do that at this time. And today was all about classification, how animals are grouped together. We talked about some of the large animals with backbones primarily, the chordates, animals in the chordata. And we shared one invertebrate with you as well, another classification of animals. Chordates, small in comparison to the entire number of animals out there, only about 3%. Those animals without backbones, 97% of the maybe 30 million species alive on the planet today. Crazy. Phew. We did hope, it. Hope you guys had a great time today. I know I did. Your Zoo Adventures today, team today with Steve in front of the camera, Leslie behind. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you at the zoo one of these days soon. Remember to stay safe. The zoo time tickets still. Still asking to make those online reservations because of the timed tickets. And we're asking you to wear a mask for the safety of the guests, safety of the staff, and the safety of the animals as well. Hope to see you on Wednesday. Stay safe. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>